Go ahead and share your question. I'm Eileen Coffey, and I'm a resident of Harford County. Most of you have proposed eliminating personal taxes and cutting corporate taxes. How will you replace these funds, or at least some part of them, or which programs will you eliminate? As county executive, we did lower property taxes, so we have the experience. The key is not that you need more money, and I would phase out the income tax over a five-year plan. After the first year, we would examine how it worked to make sure that we were bringing in less money. What it will do is it will grow your economy, so it, it makes the pie bigger, ultimately. That is what happened in those nine states. They're not just blue or red states, you know, Texas, Tennessee, Delaware, Washington State. They don't have the income tax. There are nine of them. They are the most successful economic states in our country, but they only represent 20 percent of the people, but over 70 percent of the new jobs that have been created. That's where people are going. They're basing it on that. So you won't need more money. The, the key for our, we will actually spend $5 billion less. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll start with the departments and say, lower your budget by 3%. Now, can each of you live off three cents less than a dollar? Most likely you can. This, this, the government can. They've raised the price of government by 35% in the last eight years. And I'm sure none of you got a 35% pay increase. Another thing is if we get rid of the income tax, anybody who has a pension, a lot of those people are making that decision. I'm moving to Pennsylvania, I'm moving somewhere, you know, especially if you're a veteran. Why should they have to pay a tax on their pension? They're just leaving to go somewhere else. We want them to stay here in the state. That builds your economy. That provides the extra money that you need. Mr. George. Ms. Coffey, thank you for the question. It's a good question. I've already uncovered waste within the government. I did it from the federal, go uh, federal government's audits of our state, and I'll give you an example. Four straight audits, they found at least $370 million that was wasted to child health care disbursements to Baltimore, not getting to the people it was supposed to, no accountability where it goes. If I gave $200 million more to those kids, I could still save $100 million. It's more getting to them. I'm not cutting the program itself. It's the department where the waste is. I can go through all the departments and give you different examples of this. Uh, Prince George's County, four straight audits over eight years. $400 million of their $1.8 billion education budget was wasted. Same thing. They couldn't find where it was going. Four straight times. I had an amendment on the House floor saying withhold some money till they straighten it out. And they haven't. I will get more money to the schools and still have some money. So I'll be able to do that 10% cut right away. That's how I can do it, because I've already uncovered that through the federal and independent audits. But then I'm going further. I'm asking for independent audits of all departments and agencies. Department of Legislative Services is willing to help with that. They're excited about it, because they've seen the waste and nobody's ever doing anything about it. I've been on the front line on a budget committee for these past eight years. I know where the money is. I know what's happening. We need a bigger voice. You put me in the governor's seat and you'll have it. Thank you. Mr. Hogan. When, uh, when we were running the state government, uh, before this current administration, when we left and turned over the keys to the group that's now running Annapolis, uh, we had a billion dollar cash surplus in the bank. Uh, the state was in the best fiscal shape it's been in decades. Since that time, uh, this administration has increased spending by $10 billion. That's a 36% increase. The, the National Governors Association, which is a nonpartisan group, said we increased spending at a rate higher than 46 other states, that only three states in the country uh, increased spending the way we did. So spending is the number one problem. We don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. Um, I agree with, with some of the comments the other fellows made. Our plan, the Hogan-Rutherford plan, is to first get spending under control. And we've identified $1.75 billion worth of waste, fraud, and inefficiency and duplication of effort throughout every single agency in state government. That's where we'll start. I also agree with Ron. We're calling for independent outside audits of every single state agency. That's part of our plan. We have a requirement for a balanced budget here in Maryland. So you can't just say, we're going to eliminate all the taxes and have no plan for replacing, where, where are you going to cut? We have a plan on how to cut spending, and then you know, we're going to get as many of these taxes rolled back to the 2000 levels as, 2007 levels as we can before these 40 tax increases killed our economy. But you can't, you know, the Democrats are proposing billions of new spending without saying how to pay for it. Some Republicans are saying, let's eliminate all the taxes without saying what they're going to cut. We have a plan that's taking a look at both sides of the equation. Mr. Lawler. The assumption is that they're spending your money efficiently now. And that's a terrible assumption to make. The numbers are accurate, 36% increase. 
But let me give you a, uh, just an even more of a better example of that. Where did we get $220 million to waste on a failed website for the Affordable Health Care Act implementation? I mean, my wife is pretty good with my dollar. She takes care of my, my money because she's much better at it than I am. She can tell you when we're missing 15 cents. How do we just miss $220 million so we can start all over again? And we have a legislature currently that knows we have a $215, $210 million structural deficit. But even though we have that deficit, they still found a way to vote themselves a pay increase this year. It's interesting when people try to corner my comments and say, he wants to eliminate the personal income tax. How are you going to pay for it? How can we continue to sustain the pattern that we're on with businesses leaving us left and right, taking tax dollars with them? Over that same eight-year period, they took $5.5 billion of revenue with them. And whenever I hear someone talk about, well, you know, you're going to cut essential services, no, we don't have to. If we simply control the growth, instead of growing, for example, at 5.5%, 6% like we did this year at $2.3 billion, and only grow at 2%, we'll save ourselves $1.3 billion, uh, $1 billion in the first year. So the assumption that they're spending it wisely, don't make that failed assumption. In fact, we are in such a financial crunch that your legislators voted themselves a pay increase on a part-time job this year. There's a problem with that. We do have the savings, and personally, I have a um, wonderful lieutenant governor that will, that will serve you well, and Ken Timmerman, who is an investigative reporter, and we're doing external audits on every tax bill that was passed over the past eight years. We'll find the savings. Time is